All right, you're welcome back. In November 2017, President Muhammad Buhari presented a budget of 8.6 trillion naira to the National Assembly for passage as the fiscal document for the year 2018. Now, the presidency said it decided to start the budget approval process early for quick signal or signage and signage rather and implementation. But more than four months after its presentation, the proposed 2018 budget is yet to be approved by the National Assembly. And after so much back and forth between the Senate and the presidency, ministries and agencies, the National Assembly finally agreed to lay the budget on April the 19th and set the date of passage for April 24th. But even uh, this plan has not gone according to schedule. Senate President Bukola Saraki last week ordered uh, the 20 subcommittees to tidy up and submit their reports to the Committee on Appropriations by Friday uh, to ensure that the budget meets up with the deadline. And many Nigerians say the delay and controversy that surrounds the budget passage every year has become a Nigerian tradition. Is the National Assembly on track to meet its set deadline for the budget passage and kickstart the 2018 fiscal year? Well, 2018 is already an old year, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Well, Achika Chude is already uh, with us here in the studio. Uh, uh, thanks for staying with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll expect to be joined uh, on phone by, okay, is an economist, an economist and financial analyst, Aki Omishade. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, let's begin with you, Aki Omishade. Uh, now, financial experts like yourself uh, have been warning uh, over the 2018 budget delay and its effects on the nation's development. Uh, what's your take on this uh, delay? Uh, well, good morning and uh, how are you today? Well, Very fine. well, thank you. Fine. Let's go straight to the point. The delay is, is, is a major hindrance to, de to growth and development. A budget of growth, a budget of development that does not involve spending or expenditure planning is a failed budget. So the expectations of Nigerians, the expectations of investors, the expectations of you and I, uh, the, ma the materialization of that expectation is just being delayed. So on a, on a macro level, it is affecting everybody adversely. On a micro level, it is affecting the international community. The investors don't, with, it's, with, the investors don't know where we are heading for. It's so shameful, and I say that, I choose my words carefully, that it's so shameful that the budget is not yet even before the appropriations committee of the upper chamber. That means... We, it is not likely that we get this budget approved or the, the commencement of the implementation not until probably June or July. That means we'll probably be seven months, six to seven months into our financial year, and we don't know how much we are spending, how much we're expecting, how much are we using to service debt, how much are we using on infrastructural development, it's, it's putting a handbrake on a moving train. Okay. Mm. All, all right. Let me bring you in here, uh, uh, Achiki Chudin. The House of Rep Speaker, uh, Yakubu Dogara, has fixed, or even some time ago last month, mm -hmm. fixed uh, April 24th. Now, with all of the reports we're getting, it seems like due diligence have not really been done yet when it comes to what it really takes to put the budget or to pass the budget. But... <laughs> Time is running out, so it seems like uh, let's just uh, formality. We've we've settled all the differences between the National Assembly and the and the uh, executive. Let's just pass this thing and make it make it go ahead. It seems like it's more of a formality. Look, look, what is happening goes to the heart of governance, mm. and the heart, and you know goes to the fundamentals in terms of uh, you know your ability to deliver, you know mm. services uh, to the people. Um, but of course, you know we know that a budget cycle, you know, from you know planning stage and all of that mm. to uh, passage and all, it, it should be to pass it should be from you know December 31st, January 1st, and all of that. Already we have exceeded that. From I mean, since the budget was not even ready by January 1st and so on, we had already exceeded that. Now they set a timeline of April 24th, which from every you know empirical evidence shows mm. that they are not going to meet up with that. Yeah. So you uh, you tell yourself again, the same of the same, no matter the excuses this time around. But this is what we have had from 1999 to date, and it is not just in the preparation of budget and implementation of budget. I mean, the heart really is in the implementation too. Mm. Even if eventually this budget is passed.
you're going to have by the end of December about 30 to 40 percent of the budget implemented. And this is what has happened with the 2017 yes. the budget itself. Mm -hmm. As at December, also it was discovered that about 40 percent of the budget had been implemented. And so what do you do with the rest? In those days, it went by the 20, you know, disappeared by way of corruption in terms of the budget, you know, provisions. Mm -hmm. It was only the late Musa Yaradwa that told Nigerians what was happening. They would just wait. Sometimes maybe it is premeditated and the rest. By the time you're getting to December, December and they see that this budget, this monies cannot be exhausted. Mm. They start coming up with fictitious, you know, projects and all of that. And then the money, the balance of the money simply disappears. It, it was the late year that, that alerted the nation to what was going on and tried to check it. You know, so it is really, really unfortunate because there is no way you can deliver, no matter what electoral promise you have made to the people. If you do not have a budget that is prepared on time, mm. if you do not have a budget that is simply implemented on time and, and timely and uh, you know efficaciously, there is no way you're going to deliver on whatever promises you have made to the people. So it doesn't matter whether the vice president comes and tells Nigerians how hard they are working to deliver on their you know on promises to the Nigerian people and so on. Mm. The heart of their abil ability to deliver, mm. you know, is dependent on the economy. I mean, sorry, on the so on, on the budget the, mm. because it's from there that you are able to determine in what direction you're going to take the economy at the micro and the macro economic level like which, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, which I just talked pointed. about. Yes, yes too. Um, okay, let me come to you. Uh, the, let, let's even look at the process of coming up with the budget. How is it that the legislature, the MDAs, and of course the executive and every uh, key stakeholder that should be involved in the budget process seems not to be in the loop? Because, I mean, this issue of uh, delayed budget, because the, the, the National Assembly uh, waits for the MDAs to come and defend their budget and all of that. What do, you, what, what do you think is going on with the budget process where all involved are not involved? Well, there are lapses and there are, there, there are templates that the government and consultants have come up with. The problem now, we need to go back to the budget planning office. When this budget is being prepared, mm -hmm. have all the due diligence exercises been complied with? If the budget planning office has failed, the foundation upon which the budget is, is being based on has already failed. That is where the problem lies. This NDA that we are talking about, the, 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 the budget and planning office, and that's where the Minister for Budget Planning should be, should be held accountable. That why, what, what are the processes that ought to have been complied with or carried out when the budget was being prepared? Don't forget that this budget was delivered well in advance of December 31st. Well in mm. advance, in order for us to have it done, to have it, the commencement of its implementation by January 1st. We had problems with the budget as it were, as a then. What did the Office of the Budget and Planning Office do? Nothing. The, the buck was passed down to the MDAs and they were told, go and defend your estimates. The MDAs are reluctant to defend the estimates. So the question now is, the processing and the templates and the formatting for the preparation of the budget, is it fault? Is it is it filled with lapses that we need to address? That is something that we need to review. Mm. Just as the last speaker has spoken, there are so many things that we've discovered in, the, in our processes that we need to review. So, in, in answering your question in the summary form, yes. what needs to be done is, let's go back to the basics. Do we have a one-year budget? When do we prepare the budget? Then, as that now, as that now, my question to Nigerians, my question to Mr. President, my question is, if a minister is failing in such a crucial aspect of your government, what do you do? This has happened for too many yeah. times in this regime. Last year, the budget was not passed until way into the, into the year. As of December this year, 17% of the budget had been implemented. It's a failure. So what is happening to the 83% of the budget? And that's one of the questions that the upper chamber is asking. If you, if you have 83% surplus, where is it going? Mm. Is there going to be a carryover? Is it going to be released back into the, into the tier, 
to the to the to the, to the fund that will be used for 2018 why why are we not answering those questions mm. this is what we nigerians will be asking our legislators and our ministers and those in government let's let, let's make it understandable to the man on the street mm -hmm. i put on paper i'm going to spend 100 naira in 2018 i am expecting to borrow 50 naira and i will pay 40 naira interest 90 naira i have 10 naira profit However, the year before, I have 20 Naira profit. Mm. But in my estimation, I have not included the 20 Naira yeah. profit. So there are questions. The, the, the House of Red has stated that by March 2018, the budget will be ready. There is no consonance between the two houses. <laughs> the, the upper house is saying, no, we, there's going to be two weeks break after Easter. We're going to come back. We're going to have another break. You know, so all these questions now will be in the minds of investors as well. I want, yeah. I am a businessman, for instance, I want to go to the bank. I don't know how much the bank will set the interest rates are because the bank is also waiting for the budget. The central bank does not know how, how much to save in our sovereign wealth funds because we don't know how much the government will be borrowing. So because of the air of uncertainty, we are just at a standstill. The economy is just grinding, you know. It's, as, as they say, there's a lot of there's a lot of action, but there's no motion. That's mm. what is actually happening. All right, uh, Achike, with the from what he's saying, it looks like the, the the when it comes to implementing budget is like on autopilot, where anyhow, just just put it there and it's mm. going to move. But let Nigerians are quite very concerned. If you break down the content of the budget in so many of the areas to the nitty-gritty what are the items and all of that for instance where but so much millions are budgeted for cutleries in 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 the ministry or in any of the sectors as the case may be and every single year there's always still those millions for the same cutlery every year and all of that nigerians are still very concerned about our budgeting process that we, we, we keep doing it in a very crude way where there is no accountability and all of that yeah in other words nigerians um, are even questioning this uh, tendency to just copy and mm, paste copy paste Take and from move on 2017 and 28 it, mm. it makes you wonder whether there's really thoroughness it, and it, it's, it's not just that there's also impunity mm. because i mean you made it clear that every year items that uh, i mean you don't need to replace every single year mm. are brought in you know what uh, hundreds of millions of naira mm. and the rest and then everybody shouts it's on social media and all of that and then the very next year the same thing is done again mm. uh, you, you understand and we all know that you can't just keep on replacing these things it's not they don't you know uh, uh, deteriorate overnight mm. so what is going on ultimately at the end of this so it's not just embarrassing it's also annoying to nigerians that this kind of thing continues and it must be because of the culture of impunity that has become entrenched you know within the politics of this country and because there are so many issues there is it's, it's a whole conundrum surrounding you know budget preparation defense and implementation in the country and just like you know uh, mr omisha they also said i mean it's not just about and and there's the politics of it i understand but you see if you are imbued with the vision and with the desire to serve mm. You understand? If you're filled with a sense of patriotism, the primary motivation for what you do would be to provide for the you know, welfare of the citizens of the country. Mm. And so that means that primordial and parochial sentiments you know, that would normally uh, you know, place your interests above that of the nation and the, and the society so would we'll we'll, we'll take the back seat and all of that. And so you would expect that in this process itself, the budget and you know, you know, planning office, you know, the, uh, the budget planning office would have in concert with the committee on budget at both the House of Representatives mm. and the Senate would have sat down from the very beginning, mm. yeah. inviting all the parastators and so on, so that, at the, so that there is some kind of harmony. harmony. Mm. You understand? Before you are now bringing it to the larger house itself, House of Reps and the, or the plenary itself and so on, a lot of things would have been taken into consideration. So you now have members of the National Assembly, the House of Reps and, and, and the Senate who are part of that discussion, prior discussion, all mm. this while, being the ones to defend the decisions that have been 
collected, collectively taken, you know, with the ministries, the, the, the uh, departments, and the and, and the that agencies, would and, and the all time, of that. That will reduce the time and all yeah. of those things. So we understand that there is the political aspect of it, but I, I, I believe from what is going on year in year out that this politics is not driven by the primary motivation to serve the interests of the people. And because President if Buhari it was driven, talking yes. about restoring the budget cycle. Uh, yeah. How realistic is no, that no, no, in the light yeah. of uh, goings on uh, around uh, the budget? I mean, a again, I'll go back to an expression I, I, I made before easier said than done. Mm. You, you, you understand? It's not just about words, but you must be able to show that you can walk the talk. You, you know, it's easy to say, look, you want to do this. Uh, what is needed is the political will. The, the, the desire to do the right thing and then no matter, I mean, and Mr. Misha, they also, you know, talked about uh, the fact that uh, if you have ministers that are misfiring mm -hmm. consistently and all of that, what do you do? How do you, mm -hmm. you know, also give an example, show an example to other people who you might appoint, appoint subsequently, you know, that look, this president is not, a no, it's, this government is a no-nonsense government and so on. It is by making sure that people who embarrass the government, people who are not able, who are not able to deliver, you know, on their mandate are punished are, for it. Are punished for it. Mm -hmm. And that is the only way those who are following, uh, you know, after will take the right cue, will mm -hmm. take the right warning. And so you need to be able to do that. And somehow we have not been as, ab able to assert it. Uh, you know, in this present, you know, administration. The fact that it, it, is, it has been the same thing, and it's not just with this government, from 1999 to yeah. you understand, but mm. the fact that it has continued, even under this government, clearly shows that, you know, somehow there's nobody that is in charge, because if somebody is in charge and then something goes wrong, somebody must be punished of for course. it. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, I guess we have, okay, we have just a few minutes more. Uh, we, we say about Kiyomi Shade with us on, on the phone. Now, let me ask you this uh, before we leave. Going forward now, what really, can, what scenario can play out when it comes to uh, budget passage and implementation? What should Nigerians really expect in the coming uh, days and weeks? We, we just have to wait with bated breath. And uh, the, the other issue is we should be mindful that what do, what do we do with what has not been implemented? That's the question I will be asking mm. now. We yeah, still have, but sure we still have money yeah. from last year. If this year's money has not, is not been spent or nothing has been allocated this year, what have we done with the carryover? Let us quickly implement this, the, the, the monies, the projects that we were supposed to implement last year so that we don't say it's 2017, uh, 2017 has ended. As far as our financial year is concerned, 2017 has not ended. We have elections coming up in two states. There is a gentleman called uh, Kuli Adegoki. I, I, you should listen to him when he's analyzing these issues. So you know, that is how governance should be. We should, we, should, we should stop celebrating mediocrity. The Minister for Finance should tell us how much is left in the kitty that she has not spent. So let us release those monies whilst the NAS and MBAs and the Minister for Budget Planning are still starting out 2018. We can still use those monies for 2018. 2017 has only been implemented 17%. What about the 83% of the money that has been allocated? Everyone should account for it. So Nigerians should say, okay, we're still sorting out the, 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 the 2017 money, uh, the 2018 money. The work that we've not spent, let us spend it now. That is my stake on the matter. Mm. All right. Okay, back to you, Achike, before we yeah. go. The domino effect of this delayed budget. I mean, some experts have said it affects uh, contractual agreements. Uh, contractors are not paid. Uh, when contractors are not paid, uh, workers are laid off because they cannot pay salaries. And when salaries are not paid, there's unemployment and there's, you know, uh, lack of purchasing power and all mm. of that and all of that. Do these people really realize no, yeah. the... the domino impact of this unfortunately the country would not be the way it is if they realize what governance seems i mean means and what uh, uh, duties uh, is uh, imposed on them you know uh, by history uh, because um, i mean it is it's very very clear that uh, the, it, the, the way that the, the country is the way it is today is mm. clearly because those people who should govern those people who should provide a template for how the society is going to look like 
are not doing what, what they should be doing. And that is why we see the manifestation. I mean, the crisis we talked about, unemployment, people are not being mm. paid salaries, and so manufacturing, man, the manufacturing sector is in a very, di di in a, is in a very dire situation. Yeah. You know, it's collapsed. You cannot, you know, even to import uh, a, a, a raw materials that you're going to use, you know, for your business, and so you cannot. And because this air of uncertainty, mm. you know, is not good for economic projections and economic planning. Okay, Ultimately, we'll it, boils down, down, it boils down to the welfare of the people. That's All right. it. Akiomi Shade is a financial analyst, right. uh, joined us via phone. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. And of course, thank Achike. you, Gozem. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you. Yes, yeah. and Achike Chude, of course. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much.